And good morning to everybody. Uh, thank you so much for coming in this bright moment, morning to Ivory Press to hear the, to hear and to celebrate the book. I'm going to talk in English because there are a, a, a great number of guests who come from different parts of the world and they, 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 they need to understand the language. So we will, we will talk in English. Uh, Ivory Press is honored to have here today uh, three guests who have made possible this exhibition and also the history of Ivory Press. Um, I am extremely grateful to Ron Watson, who is the, uh, the, the head of the National Library in UK and director of the books and prints in the Victorian Albert Museum. And he has been a mentor for me. And years ago, in 2008, we co-curate together an exhibition called Blood on Paper that was in the Ar Albert Museum. Um, and we enjoy immensely. Yeah. Huh? It, it seems like yesterday, but I think it was 2008. But it's it's 2008. Yesterday. And um, we published together this book, Blood on Paper, who was uh, the catalog of the exhibition. The museum and a lot of, of our um, sponsors, they didn't allow to do, his, to do it more than 3,500, and it was sold out in the, next, in, the best, in the first two weeks. So we were very proud of it. Uh, although you can see it in the bookstore, are not available for sale. But it was an experiment, um, this catalog, to treat the book, each book, in their own space, and with their own history. And, um, and this is the, 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 the attitude that follows Irma Boon. Irma Boon, welcome, is coming from Amsterdam. He is the point of reference for any designer of books. He's a maker of books. And she was claiming today how it's possible that in this exhibition only is me uh, uh, in the exhibition uh, with my books, why they are not another designers, why they are not another binders or paper makers. That is the, one of the things that, one of the issues that Ivory Press want to cope and, um, and make, um, make uh, a, a party of all the parties involved in the book. Irma has his books here in the exhibition. He has been, uh, she has been a uh, uh, is already a legend and, um, and uh, is here just to explain us how a maker uh, leaves the book, and in this case, the artist books. They are a, a catalog of an exhibition that was done in Hamburg in 2008 by a great collector of books, artist books, who live in Paris and call the, the, the catalog and the exhibition Malen und Poeten, Pintores y Poetas, Painters and Poets. Um, here we have a poet, an artist, Peter Sachs, professor of poetry in Harvard University, and also a mainly an artist who uh, with his great generosity, we have here a major monumental work based in the process of Kafka, and is the 80, 68 pages painted that we will have here in the wall next to Goya and to Juan de Herrera, and in front of William Kendridge. Uh, uh, Peter, welcome, coming from Boston, especially for this morning and yes, the sir. opening tonight. And, uh, we have discussing upstairs that really we don't want to give a lecture about books or about how to make books. We are going to uh, have a great polemic and mainly a great party about books. Mainly when we have among our guests a, a great artist who part of his career is making books, which is Richard Long. And also we have here Christine who is the director of the Oxford Library and uh, the University of Oxford, 
Welcome, Christine. So among then we have another artist and designers like Herman Lilly, and uh, who also will, we will like that you integrate yourself in the discussion. But first of all, I want to ask our guest, what for them is an artist book? Rohan. An artist book, but I'm in a state of subdued excitement having, having come here and, and absorbed the exhibition at a, at a first glance. Um, and I think you have to be a curator to know exactly how much work goes into these things. And uh, to have got this number of astonishing works together, I think, is a real, real, real um, um, achievement. Um, I was very struck when going through um, a photo book published by Steidl. Uh, the photographer, Rod Polidori, has initialed the, the front saying, digital is forgetting, is for forgetting, and analog is for um, remembering. And uh, I discussed this with my colleagues in the VNA who, de who, who deal with uh, 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 photography to find that this really is a, a sort of a philosophical point. Artist books cling in your mind when they're really successful. And you cannot disassociate the messages of texts and images from the actual physical format of what's there. And it just, it just um, uh, 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 doesn't go away. Um, there's a kind of, of sort of summing up of ideas. One needs time for artist books. Other books, I think, you, you absorb texts and they, and, and, and they live with you, but they live with you sort of independently as ideas. Whereas the artist book actually brings you back to that, uh, 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 to that work of, 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 of creation. And it's something that lives, uh, uh, that lives on. But that's a very difficult question, uh, Elena. Uh, uh, what is an I artist think book? Uh, my, my, as a publisher, I have seen so many ways to understand artist books that for me, the, I cannot give any definition. So I would like that Irma, perhaps, who is a maker of books and deals with books. Yeah, for me, the artist book is, uh, as a book designer who loves big print runs, uh, hates PDFs, um, it's really difficult. Uh, I've, it's a weird relation it's because all the books here have small print runs, are very illustrative, uh, are looking also for the limits what, what you can do with a book, but it's all within the limits of making it almost by hand. And I'm a book designer who loves the industrial made book. And so for me, it's, it is a, a, an interesting conflict and uh, something I really want to research. And I also um, admire, I admire what I see here. It's really beautiful, but they're really pieces of art. And me as a book designer, I don't consider whatever I make, even if it's a tiny book, that it's not a piece of art. I'm not an artist, I'm a graphic designer. And so the challenge you asked me this morning to, to make a book, can I say that? Yes, yes, yes. To make a book about these books here in the it's exhibition. Because next year, Ivory Press will be 20 years. So Irma, Ivory Press has commissioned Irma to do the book of the artist books. So we were discussing the whole morning about So it. for me, that's really challenging to find a way to convey the, 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 the fantastic tactility and whatever all the books have here in the exhibition, to have that in an industrial-made book. So a book which you can share with a lot of people, which is not so expensive. So it's almost on the contrary. No, but there the, the are books like, for instance, we the same that you are saying, Gerald Richter told me one day, I... Oh, Lucian Freud, in fact, said, I don't want to do artist books. In fact, he denied to do an artist book for Ivory Press because I don't believe in very small nine edition or two yeah. edition. I want to do books for everybody. And, uh, and so we decided to do these tiny books that we gave to artists just only the format. See, but that's a different thing. And it's 17 of euros. An so, and we do 2,000 <laughs> copies, and they are artist books because the artists choose everything the paper, the typography, the content, everything which is in the book. But because we do it in 2,000 copies, 3,000 copies can be sold for 70 euros and, or 20. And, and I think that's my aim for the book that it's sharing. Uh, this this wonderful collection and, and the idea of the artist book, but especially this book because the book is only in the bookstore but not in the show. 
Yes, Which they're in the show there. Understand. All this uh, yeah. is part of the show, okay. and, and you have here books like, for instance, the, the library limited edition of Paul McCarthy mm -hmm. or Paul K, and the first edition, which is already an artist book of Robin Frank, of, of the Europeans, and they are all the books. And in fact, the only thing that we do in this collection is that uh, when they are sold out, never again. No, so, for instance, no. the Gerald Richter is all out, so, or Christina Iglesias is all out. Yeah. So, it's finished, but it will be in 3,000 or 2,000 yeah. houses. But, but the challenge, sorry, one more line, but the challenge to make something very specific in that, in that idea of making an industrial book, so like the Sheila Hicks book or like the book you have here in the, in the show, something very specific you didn't expect in the industrial uh, made book. So that's, that's my aim. Can I jump in just on this particular issue since we are already in the midst of a <laughs> discussion? Um, and then I'll come back to some of my own ideas. But it occurs to me that trying to mediate this situation of the artist book and wide publication, the issue of scale is worth considering because what's fascinating is that you held up an example, and I think that the small scale and the idea of intimacy, if one can publish many editions, if they remain something that you can hold in the hand, um, I'm very struck by the degree to which, as a book, one is appealing in some ways not only to the eyes and not only to deep memory, but to the hands. And I think that the advantage to me of artist books is the ability to integrate the senses in a way that the divided arts on their own are not capable of doing. So that each artist book for me is a miniature revolution. It is uh, an, a, awakening the threshold between, let's say, words and images, but it's also dramatizing the threshold between the inward and the outward, between the private and the public. And so these issues come together in a way that I think is an astonishing provocation every time there's an artist book coming into the world. It is a genuinely new object and is redefining the genre. And so I see artist books as genuinely revolutionary. It, I, I think it's not a coincidence that in the history of artist books, whether one goes from Blake and the American and French revolutions uh, to uh, Mayakovsky and some of the works here that are associated with the Russian Revolution or the states of transition, I think artist books occur at moments of extreme transition where people are having to reimagine the boundaries between different kinds of mentality. And I'm so inspired by this exhibition and the range of books and my companions here at this table that I'm even beginning to imagine what if there are no boundaries to what an artist book is? What if this situation right here were a kind of living book in which there is a page here, there is a spine here, there's another page there, there's an extra margin <laughs> over there, and we are creating a kind of living book so that the idea, we have to keep thinking, what is a book? Is it a living right. thing? Is it, a, I, I, is it an I've object? And all mm -hmm. of these things come into being, but I want to just keep the idea of the hand and of memory, which Rowan was m mentioning, which I think is crucial. And these would be some of the things I think we should factor in. Well, I'd, I'd like to put in a sort of a middle, um, a, a middle course, as, as, as it were. Yes. There are artists who produce great books. When you think of the Russian books you refer to, the constructivist books, I'm sure they were not happy with the te technologies that they had to use, uh, 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 but they did use it. It seems to me that one of the great lessons of artist books, and particularly um, Teriatsky, I, I repress and, and, and that kind of thing, is, is, is actually not obliging an artist to make any compromises. Anyone who's had experience of books knows that the production of books is a si systematic series of compromises. When you look at an open book, you're very much aware that there is the author's point of view, there is the publisher's point of view, what kind of paper have you chosen, what kind of font, all books are a kind of compromise. Yes. And occasionally you do get these works where it is all up to one personality to, to, but to, to, to are say what's important. For instance, like Jenny Holzer, that when we asked to do the book, you will see it's a video installation. He, she didn't want to use paper. She didn't want to use any kind of material, just only 
an installation, a video, a projection, which is completely, con but is completely uh, the opposite to Isidoro Valcárcel with the installation that we have here of thousands and thousands and thousands of pages of his book about words, which is the repetition in several languages of the same words. So, which is a, using different technique, you see? It, yes, yes. Or no? Yeah. It is a different technique. I mean, I, f I find the language in that being so absolutely fascinating. Uh, uh, going through it, I'm, I'm, I'm seduced into it by, uh, by the ideas and the, and the, the sort of material environment is, 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 is an extra plus. But talking about that, I think the, the book that you did on, she on Sheila Hicks is rather exciting. You say that you, for you the success of the book is the, is the print run and you want it to be X number, X number of copies, but and, you've, and you've, specific, you've, you've, you've produced specific. there a book which has wonderful tactile qualities, and the printing of those textiles is, is glorious. That seems to me a, 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 a kind of work which both for, argues for in your favor that, and against for, for me, that book is the manifesto for the book, for the paper book, for the right. printed book. So I'm very limited uh, in this audience because I'm an advocate for the printed book, the paper mm -hmm. book, with a spine and a cover, mm -hmm. with all the limitations what a book is. It's basically turning the pages, but how can you find an, an experiment and not compromise right. within those limits? So for me, that's the exciting thing, and also for the book uh, I will make for Ivory Press. How can you make a very specific book with no compromise, but with the, with the limits, what a paper book is. But then it seems to me in that book you've actually adopted a number of of uh, design elements which do come from very rare um, um, artist books. I think one of the of the joys, if I may say so, with the with the blood on paper right. catalogue, is that the series of photographs that it teaches the eye to go to particular points of the book. It looks at the qualities of the paper, the qualities of of, of the sewing, all 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 sorts of material aspects which do always stay in, 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 the, in the memory. It seems to me that in the Sheila Hicks book, you've, you've actually got almost, almost like a decalage all the way around the end. Mm. I'm not sure how technologically that's achieved, but it's a rather wonderful a idea it's in a, a book which is about woven, woven materials. Yes, yeah, so actually the edge of the book and so the materiality, of course, is very important. I worked four years on the book to, to, to get the edges as they are and still open the book. And uh, it's machine made, I can tell you, but it's it's an uh, image rhyme with the the work of uh, of Sheila Hicks, so with the edges, the but how, of how, work. how, for instance, see the book of the process done by Peter that we have here, the sixty eight pages in four chapters. How, mm -hmm. which is one edition only? Yes, like like the one of Ansel Kiefer here. Yes, well, this is something. I would like to say is that there are books which I think are made without publication and multiplication in mind that are seen as really quite private explorations of a journey that one might take. And I think that there has to be a spectrum between these unique pieces that are almost in the form of diaries or notebooks. Mm. And on the one hand, and the ability to produce books for a wide world. Because if one doesn't have the polarity and the tension between these, then what the wide world is receiving doesn't retain the privacy, the spontaneity, Absolutely the sense agree. of exploration, Absolutely the agree. idea of starting um, in relation to the questions of compromise that will come up later. Because that's a reflection of our lives. We would all aspire to a kind of unique, autonomous individuality, but then we come up into tension with the society. And in a way, artists' books relive this particular threshold and this experience. And so my own work has begun with making what I felt would never be reproduced. Um, perhaps not even be seen by others, which are very intimate visual diaries with script, with recording of um, certain phrases, certain ideas. The ones that you have And in this that case, we have yeah, those yeah. are in the between, those little notebooks, uh, which were not designed for multiplication. And the Kafka, by the same token, was a strange act of private homage to this remarkable work of the process, where I would 
hand type. It sounds demented, but on an old typewriter, just start typing out the entire text of the Kafka novel and then accompanying it with a visual representation of how I felt about the text. Not what I thought about the text, but how I felt so that I could draw on this other part of consciousness that would then supplement and create a new hybrid entity that would be another kind of process or another kind of trial. Does, so, uh, does this come from dissatisfaction with the way that you met the Kafka text in conventional publishing? Well, that's really interesting because the way I met the text was purely as language. And so um, Kafka did indeed do little tiny caricatures. He loved to make stick figures, yes. tiny things. But they didn't carry the wealth of the tactility that you've been referring to mm. or the visceral sense of my horror or my sense of the absurdity um, or the extraordinary labyrinthine repetitious nature of that novel. So I wanted to give expression to it on page after page um, by mm. typing it out and doing this. And that's kind of opposite case of that, if I may refer to, which is the celebrated Blaise Sandras, Sonia Delaunay book, La Prose du yes. Trans-Siberien, which isn't in the exhibition, but as, I, as soon as I walked in the door this morning, Elena had a book and showed, and showed, and sh and, and showed me this book. Now, that's an instance of, of, a, of, of a poet and, and an artist thinking in terms of, of colour and font size. That poem does not make any sense at all in its edition in a Pleiad or... Or, or uh -huh. anything like that, I agree. because he is thinking through fonts and colours. There are different things happening. There are different registers in the poem, which yes. all come out in 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 colour and in font size. Train signs drift past the window. Uh, he suddenly has a, a throwback of memory, and it's yes. all all there in this artist's book. And yet, that is not the way the the mass produced access, ac ac access to, to that, this uh, that's perfect uh, and in fact there are certain classical uh, literary works which originally in their making involved visual elements that have been lost in the mass publication of just the printed now I'm not talking about mass publication of artist books mm -hmm. but for example when Faulkner wrote as I lay dying which as you know is m in many different voices he used different colors for the different authors, uh, the different protagonists' um, streams of consciousness. And there was green text, and there was blue text, and there was black text, and that was lost. But, and, or, for example, in Proust, in a way, his revisions with those long trailing ribbons of text, it would be extraordinary to see a reproduction of Proust with that authentic process of seeing, remembering, revising, working over and over. What we get is a somewhat sterilized uniform product in a play out edition or another edition, but we lose that extraordinary record of the process of the making. And that's what I love about artist books, is that they keep alive at their best the very process of discovering in, in the making a ways, unique ways of recording what is uh, calling upon one to make an artist book. I, I remember vividly many years ago doing the book that is exhibited in this, in this show with uh, Richard Long, who is here. You remember, Richard, when we went through France to look for a, 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 a paper maker, and we spent time designing the materials that will go into the paper to make the paper. Then it was an endlessly process to decide the inks, and we, uh, the printer gave us inks that the father has bought in Boston in an old uh, shop, and you spend hours mixing the inks in order to get the right green that you are going to see in one of the walks that he did. And also, we spend endless, frozen, cold mornings and days in that printer studio outside London with jumpers. I see now the photos the other day. We were like, uh, and and the, the, the deciding how to do the, 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 the printing, the, and after with the binding by hand. So Richard uh, does what you are describing, is discovering the book and the process of the book, making the book, yes. and making an artist book. In, not, yes. um, in this case, was not very high edition, but enough, but one by one. Yes. and seeing one by one. So um, I think, Richard, after perhaps you can tell us about this process and you can just, because of all the books that 
Ivory Press has done, Richer has been the most of the most in timing, not in devotion mm -hmm. or in dedication and, and discovery and exploration, but in timing to the last detail of every book that mm. we have done. Well, I think when Ron was speaking about the choice of the paper or the attention to the materiality of the book or even the sewing, um, mm. I, I find that to be really a crucial component because it is drawing your attention to people's relation to the material world in a way that transcends language and that nevertheless speaks to that large part of ourselves which before we even knew how to speak um, was very much aware. And I'm struck by the fact that if you think of children's books, why is it that there is so, ma so many children's books involve a combination of image and text? And in a way, there's something about the earliest states of consciousness which draw on these various media and I think even the most sophisticated makers of artist books are trying to recapture some of that strange, unknowing wonder about these, can we take language for granted? How do we move between um, our words for things and the things themselves? But, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah. uh, you have done that with your book, Chanel. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about it? Yeah, so the materiality and, and um, so, but again, I, I think it's really nice to, to invent something and I, the compromise thing for me is really uh, a big thing uh, during, uh, I'm a designer 24 seven and uh, everybody always asks me to compromise. Can you do less? Can you do this or that? So it's really uh, a challenge. And for Chanel, I made a book about a perfume number of five and for an exhibition in uh, Palais de Tokyo in Paris. And, and I thought, well, perfume is invisible. I want to make an invisible book. But I want to make a book, of course, because I'm a book designer. Mm -hmm. And I really want to have something bound, etc. So for me, the, the classic idea of what a book is. And, um, and then I thought, well, let's make a book which is, uh, with, which is uh, not visible, but very present. So it's a white book with only embossing, so no ink is used. And, um, and I thought, well, thinking of Chanel, a big company, they would never ex <laughs> accept this uh, kind of strange book. But they said, c'est génial. Uh, and so it, it was really very, they understood what, uh, what perfume does, and so what this crazy book, which is almost an artist book, is an artist book. Spine, the, it has a very beautiful paper-like uh, spine, and <clears throat> but I thought, well, I made this book, and it has all this text and images uh, related to uh, Gabriel Chanel, so uh, images from Picasso, Rivardi, and text from Rivardi, Cocteau, and then I thought, well, this book will be in the shop of Palette Tokyo. What happens? I thought nobody would buy it because it's this white book in a black box. You basically don't see anything. But people will, would buy it. Not only one, they would buy I it. I couldn't find wine to exhibit here. <laughs> You should have asked me before. Could I, could I introduce a, a historical dimension here? I mean, you'll find whenever you work with printers in hot metal, they feel that Gutenberg is actually a comrade, that yes. they're doing exactly yes. the same kind of thing, and, 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 and the work is the same. People f forget the materiality of the book goes, mm -hmm. uh, goes way back. I treasure very much the remark of, of a colleague of mine. who uh, We were talking about, about bindings, mm -hmm. and, of course, machine-produced bindings are often not frightfully agreeable mm -hmm. to, to, uh, to handle. When you're in bed, you can't hold the, the paperback back enough for, for a shadow yes. on the page, and there are all sorts of problems. And I, I, and I can remember this discussion. He said, well, of course, you know, the high point is actually about, and then I waited, about 1160. <laughs> Since then, book design has actually gone steadily downhill. <laughs> now, that is somebody who... <laughs> yes. text in this book. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. But I do, I, I do think that we need very much in today's environment um, those, those places where, where that can be rediscovered, where, yes. the, where, the, um, the, where the machine product has to be called to order not that I'm a sort of an arts and crafts enthusiast. Right. Machines are glorious and wonderful and, and, and all of that. But to get back to the feelings of what a properly physically put together work 
is, is, is something very important. The one frustration one feels in, in, in any exhibition with books, of course, is you want to touch the paper. You want to see what yes. the droop feels like. As, mm -hmm. as, yes. as, well, as we have here yes. a book, the only book that everybody can touch, which is uh, a book for blind people, done by the artist Michael Barcelo. And it's a beautiful book with text in Braille and beautiful paper. And uh, it's here next to another book uh, designed by him, which is in a, in a, white, in a, in a glass box. But it's, uh, uh, this book is, is what you say, is that to touch it and to, and to really yes. see, which is the frustrating thing here in this exhibition that we in the beginning thought, how is possible, how we can make it like happen in the, in the Victoria and Albert Museum. And we thought to put um, computers to each book to see. But afterwards we thought, no, no, no. it's taking out exactly. the, yeah. well, yeah. even we didn't it want is. to put the, the captions because we thought right. it's, it's like, a, like a punch in the stomach. Exactly. But at the end we thought, yes, well, a little, yeah. little one, yeah. uh, in order that yeah. the, the visitors have the point of reference of yeah. which year the author and the, and the title, mainly the author and the, and, yeah. and the well, year. It's the frustration mm -hmm. of showing books in an exhibition, and everybody knows if you hang a painting on the wall, you don't touch it. Yes. But a book, of course, is made yes. to, to touch. Yes. Some of them are look also to, 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 to look. Like, for instance, the book of Anis Kapoor that I have here next to me, Adan, who we did it, the three of us, no? Adan Law, many years ago, Anis and myself. And here in Madrid was done. And uh, with a lot of, you remember, we did a lot of approaches in, with materials, with uh, shapes, and at the end, you will see here the big book that you, is to look. And also there are areas that you will not see, which is the silk, beautiful white silk uh, cover that is impossible to show. Uh, but it's the only, uh, the only part of the book that you, you will touch. But to avoid that temptation, we don't exhibit it. Yes, <laughs> we exhibit the drawings and the sculptures. But it was what you say, we did the book to touch, but yeah. also to be able only to, to look at it and to and feel the bund, because it's called bund, yeah. and it's the, the deep erida. Mm -hmm. One can't actually have paradise on earth, and your visitors should go away feeling excited and happy, but wanting more. And that's yeah. an old museological principle, of course. <laughs> and and yes. what is a good thing about the Chanel book, because it's white, uh, imagine a PDF. The PDF of this book is white, so it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So you have to, book, to see the book in real. Yes. I think very few books are most known could Here be seen no in PDF. PDF. No PDF. So everybody has to go one by one for hours looking yeah. at it. And, yeah. And may, I, may, sorry, Rowan, go ahead. No, uh, may I ask Peter a question about, uh, yes. about his Kafka work? This is a personal reaction yes. uh, 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 to Kafka, which I think, if I may say so, is something that that could be very usefully shared about your view of what Kafka is. How do, how do you feel about having that reproduced as a, um, um, as, as, as a book so that the, te the text takes equal, equal status with your, uh, uh, with your presentation of it? Well, here it would completely depend, and this would be something that I would refer to Irma's expertise, but if I could feel that there was a way of making several copies of something that would retain the rawness and the texture and the sense of what had been burned, as well as hammered into the papers and the fabrics and the kinds of cloth that have all been put into that, um, I think I would be open to the possibility, um, but it would be a matter of trying to retain as much of the uniqueness mm -hmm. and then um, either choosing the materials, finding the equivalents of cloth, of lace, of garments, well, of clothing, it, it can, of burning, of scorch marks. The book of, I believe uh, it Francis can be. Bacon. And I would be, um, um, uh, Rowan, very open to that. I think it would be something that would be quite marvelous for me because the Kafka book though it was a very private engagement for me with that novel, it had large political, historical um, resonance. I mean, I first encountered it, I grew up in South Africa during the apartheid regime, 
And so Kafka was, with his sense of the bureaucratized inhumanity and injustice that was being inflicted on prosecuting an individual without any rule of law. And it has, it, it it, has a relevance today, I think. It has a complete relevance today. It seems to me that book was actually written 100 years ago today. It was 1914, 1915 that he was working on that book. It didn't get published till 1925. But that book does have enormous political, and I would love to see it somehow go into the world. And I could imagine something on that scale where one would turn the pages and um, encounter both the absurdity and the horror and the uh, humor. Apparently, Kafka would laugh a great deal when he would read his works out loud, which seems in but it's very, inconceivable. But, it's but to capture that um, complexity of my relation to the text, my visceral feelings about it, and have it be shared in the way that Irma has yeah, uh, spoken. Yeah, I think that's really uh, important. But don't you feel, feel that it becomes a sort of facsimile then? If it's really yeah. uh, uh, with all the embossing and all that, which is yes. good, it, and that's why yes. you make facsimile, of course, yes. to experience. Yes, after all, there's more than one Gutenberg yeah. uh, in the world. Yeah, but that's the whole idea of Gutenberg. That's the whole idea. But I come back to what I come back to what Ron was saying about there's no paradise on earth. So maybe we can, if there's no paradise on earth, we can aim for something like Purgatorio. And um, that would be where I would imagine uh, something like this to exist. The, the last stages of poetry. Yeah, but that's right. also what yes. is good. Yes. Uh, if, yes. you, if I make book for, books for an artist, the real artwork is always the best. The book is just a representation. Yes. And uh, so I'm very happy that always a real piece remains the, the, no. the piece. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, yeah. We, it is it precisely, <laughs> Ron. No, no, Ron. We, we are, uh, there are some books uh, with the help of course, of <laughs> extraordinary artisans mm. um, and uh, techniques that now they are available, like the ones of Factum Art with uh, Adam Lowe and another, another artisans in, in America in this moment that we are working with William Kendrich in another one. Um, you can produce, you can produce not only a facsimile, yeah. a, new, a new, new copy. Mm -hmm. For instance, the book of Bacon that you are going to see here, and this time will be the first time that is exhibited in all the items in the vote in one world. We spent six years to produce 70 items. Everything was produced exactly the same with chemistry uh, exploration, with uh, mm -hmm. well, a lot of uh, specialists were involved, and we produced the same paper, the same inks, the same metals, the same, exactly the same. You cannot, yeah. you cannot exactly yeah, it means have something different. But yeah, right. but it's, yeah, of course, it's yeah. different to enter in the muse and touch no, and be there with the whole uh, detritus of no, Francis. I, I'm, that's and not the book. But, yeah, but no. this is not the book. That's not the book. You yeah. have to make the book to convey the world what you are going to see here, mm. exactly with the same. No, but I, but I mean something different. If I make a book for an artist, uh, then you have paintings to represent. The painting is always just a reproduction. That's yes. what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So but that's another idea of making a book. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the, the important thing is to create for, for a publisher and for the artist mm -hmm. in the artist books when you do edition and it's not unique like your case mm -hmm. or the case of Ansel Kiefer, um, mm -hmm. uh, the two unique so books here, different. you yes. have to work uh, very hard to create the sense of intimacy Exactly. And, and, yes. and that but is unique for you, yeah. it's mm -hmm. made for you, and it's, but that goes in very little details from the, 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 ta the, the tactile yeah. Yeah. Uh, and also the environment. Mm -hmm. For instance, we did with a perfumist in Barcelona, Puch, um, came to the studio of Francis Bacon and made a lot of uh, samples of the smell of the mm -hmm. studio mm -hmm. to be able to introduce in the book of Francis Bacon, and we got it. That's fascinating. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. how you convey when mm -hmm. a receptor open the the, the 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 luggage and find mm -hmm. all the detritus of the muse and the book that mm -hmm. had next to his bed uh, when uh, when he left uh, London and came to Madrid to die. Uh, how you can convey that. You have mm. to convey not only with the 
exactly facsimile or reproduction call or yes. new copy of the material, also the smell. There are a lot of yes. all the sense involved. No. But that's where you start moving towards uh, multidimensionality. In other words, you need uh, the suitcase, the, the sense of depth, the question of the particular individual objects, so even the smell. So one's really trying to draw on so many other modes of apprehending. Or the studio of Cambridge, Cambridge yeah, that well you, you can see through the stereotypes. Yes. So you, you, you can see into this into, world, yeah. Into yeah. it. Is, is, is there a complication with the, the idea of the original artwork? If you, if you think, I mean, one great work that hovers over everything is, is Matisse's jazz. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure if you were to go and look at all the, of all the extant copies of that print run, they would all be subtly different. Yes. So, uh, so that the idea of, of a fixed point... Yes. I think, I, I think in this instance the, uh, the, art, the, art, the, uh, the artwork may survive, but you're merely continuing a print run. Yes, but there are examples. I mean, for example, Blake's engravings, uh, the Songs of Innocence, Songs of Experience, he himself would slightly alter the coloration so that even though there was a template or a paradigm that was being reproduced, there would be these subtle variations, which were very crucial to him because he was constantly, and this I think is a topic that we should uh, explore for a moment, um, devoted not just to the idea of revolution, but to the idea of constant transformation, so that no one copy would be exactly like the next, and so that this ability to have the work seem to metamorphose mm -hmm. as you move from one to another is another challenge, so that one's not just making the same book, but is somehow each book feels um, mm -hmm. different. Yes, people might say the same about, about texts, I mean, which and, until a certain moment, are, as they go through the machines, are, be, are being revised. I, I remember being told as a student that no book produced before 1960 is actually identical. There we are, yeah, yeah. yeah. Any question in the, in the public? Carmen Hola. Jiménez. En español. <laughs> Para mí, que soy fascinante de la propuesta, y no hay que ver nada en su caso. I think a photograph is essential. In books, for example, I'm thinking about the Brassai, and the book mm. Dino Sculpture. I think uh, that was uh, extraordinary. You know, if you don't have another book of sculpture by Picasso, the, the best is the uh, Brassai. It's, of course, out of print, and it's between uh, and it's made with Picasso too, because Picasso gave a lot of attention to books and mm -hmm. to <coughs> books too and uh, to the black and white. I think uh, sculpture are the best is black and white. So the that our side of black and white is you thinking by looking this uh, exhibition of Carter or David Smith or Alfred Bolunga, that's another photograph. I think the photo photograph is important. In sculpture, especially because to have a sense of space and book doesn't give you. If you don't have a good photograph, you don't convey the perfect the, the, the of the sculpture. So, but I'm fascinated by the photographs. Thank you. Now, obviously, photo, photo books are one of the great areas which have emancipated themselves in the, in, in the last few decades. I always think. Um, a Mallarmé makes this great statement, doesn't he, saying, I'm against any kind of illustration at all. But what he was actually talking about was the use of photographs of illustration. And I always feel this is rather pointed, because um, the great novel Bruges la Morte is, is illustrated in its first edition with photographs, which are haunting, which are very much part of that, of, mm. of, of that text. And with Mallarmé <laughs> complaining about that sort of yes, use of Yes, and that's Cheerful. Color. Yeah. Well, yes, the, the early Skira books with, with Matisse have minimal color, of course. He's mm. a wonderful lyrical draftsman. Yeah, yes, the cutouts. Yes. Other... Is it Christine? Well, I have two questions. 
Christine, don't you mind to, to come here? Yeah. <laughs> although, although Christine lives in Oxford and is the the keeper and uh, uh, the the great eminence and all the books in the in the library of Oxford University. So, Christine, can you can you stand up? So the. the Uh, that's a, that, that is a non-trivial question, and it was absolutely a manual typewriter. In fact, it was many manual typewriters because it took so much out of the roller to be putting these linens and these complex materials through. I was not simply typing on paper, so I went through about five typewriters in the course of this, and some of them were extra-wide typewriters so that I could put more fabric through. But that's the quick answer. And I should just say that the manual typewriter was very crucial for me because it really requires you to press down really quite hard. And that involved gravity and the pressure of the body. And that conveyed to me a lot of my own reaction to this text, which was so much about the suffering of the body and uh, Kafka's own sense of the world. So. Uh, and Kafka, of course, himself used one of the early typewriters in the teens and the 20s. And um, so, yes, a very manual, but I have to say manual about five times. A manual, 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 manual typewriter. This, okay. this is the world we have lost, which perhaps should be revived. Yes. yes. But I have to say that uh, to see uh, Peter working in his studio alone, mm. Peter even <laughs> doesn't have a minimal one-hour assistant. No, does does nothing. himself everything. Yes. And my experience the first time that I went to his studio in Martha's Vineyard was the same that I had when I went to the muse of Francis Bacon. It was all mountains of works, all mixed with clothes, with <laughs> bottles of water, with empty uh, detritus of every kind that you can imagine. And suddenly I found the pages of the Kafka just in the corner next to a window full of humidity. I said, what is doing yes. here? Yes. So um, um, it, it will be a great experience for you to see uh, his studio, Christine, mm -hmm. and see how he works with words and uh, mm -hmm. the type of Yes. Well. Oh, yes, with its black page. Yes. I wonder if you could talk about that in the book. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. right. The history of books. <laughs> 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 Here we have the so. <laughs> well, I feel these, these, these are the shadows that sort of overhang printing in particular. I'm sure that when, when you get this great movement that, that, that begins with, uh, with Vollar to, to, uh, to insist the proper standards of printing are maintained at a time when commercial printing is mm -hmm. very successful commercially, but where the, the qualities of printing are being, are being lost. They feel very much that, that early, the early materials are the models, don't they? So you get this great cult for what Aldous Minutius, the Hypnorotomachia, for instance, mm -hmm. which is... Yes. which becomes a kind of cult object in the, yes. in the 1880s as being the, what, what book design and printing has, 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 has to get back to. Um, so always there is that, that reference back with, with, with that um, uh, technology. Uh, Tristram Shandy, of course, is, um, is one of those novels one just falls desperately in love with and uh, as soon as you end it you just have to go back to the beginning and uh, of course it, it, it has the marble page, it has the black page, black page. it always has a wonderful page, page that flourishes in the air with yes. this cudgel, a thousand of my father's most subtle syllogisms yes. could not have argued more for chastity and so yes. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a riot at every level and uh, John Baldessari has, has, has done actually a rather Tenebrosian. wonderful sort of yes. uh, view of, of of that ludic quality. In, yeah. um, in, but in, uh, um, I'm, I'm so happy that you mentioned this um, Herrera. Juan de Herrera. Because the page to which it's open 
has this fantastic um, relation between the letters of the alphabet, of course, and the architectural motifs to which they refer. So that's a kind of glossary as well. And the idea of the glossary is a, is, is a fascinating topic. But you, you, he says, from the letter C to the letter M, and, you, and you're imagining, yes, these letters, but behind them you're feeling these entire buildings. And this idea of somehow reviving the alphabet itself is something that I think is going on from uh, around that moment. But you could, you could approach it the other way, which is to say that, that everything in, in early printing is taken from the manuscript book. And the letter shapes, the page design, ev even the, the sort of accelerator, accelerated punctuation, the round bracket, the semicolon, mm -hmm. this kind of thing, is all standardized in the manuscript book. And there is a history to the collecting of those things, of, 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 of humanistic manuscripts, isn't there, where suddenly it becomes in the late 19th century that they, that they get a value that, that they haven't had, had, um, um, had before. So type designers around 1900 are very much aware of, of not only early printing, but what formed early mm -hmm. printing, which is, uh, which is the manuscript book producing industry. Yes, but also the, 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 the huge amount and importance, particularly in humanist early Renaissance, where they were receiving prior texts, the huge importance of marginalia and annotation, which would be therefore in a different font or a different script, and there would be handwriting as well as printed. That mixture, that hybridity, uh, seems to me to be an absolutely crucial component of artist books, where one has yeah. uh, text and then reflections upon the text, yeah. and one is never illustrating. One is somehow re-experiencing and recording the momentary interaction between the reader and the book. Uh, for, for me uh, to see this was the first book Elena of course showed yes. to me um, for me uh, it's the old books are a reference for my the, the work I'm doing so I even have a library uh, at home with mm -hmm. old books mm -hmm. and books of the 60s so these two revolutions so the the early printed books and the books from the 60s, they're an amazing inspiration source. And like Grim Kohlhaas says in, my, in the introduction in this book, from the moment where the this body so was fantastic. important, uh, now the body do isn't impor important at all, where you were describing how you push yes. letters and, and how you work with type. So that's completely different uh, nowadays. There, there mm. is hardly any body effort anymore. It's really, uh, but, but for, for me, the books, size, typography, these books are my reference. Mm -hmm. It's hardly, hardly to see, but they are my reference. Yeah. Yeah. It's not hard to see. If you, you no. go through the books Thank of Irma Boom, it's a, it's, a, it's a very close bridge mm. and link. Yeah. Uh. But I think um, that our moment is such an extraordinary moment. Um, if one thinks of the dematerialization of language, in the electronic media particularly, um, my sense of rematerializing language so that we can remember that the word text is etymologically the same as the word textile or the word texture, and it all goes back to the Greek for weaving. So that for me to bring texture back to text is an absolutely crucial part of our continuing our civilization rather than surrendering to text without texture. Uh, which would be like surrendering to uh, giving up our bodies. And this is uh, our confrontation with the, 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 the possibility of a post-human future. Seems to me that the artist book is one of those places where we can continue to contest. What well, 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 you uh, have said, we have the most beautiful and amazing mo uh, model of it, which is the book of Eau de la Mer of Luz Bourgeois, yes. where text, color, and texture mm. in with cloth is, is, uh, exactly. is just yeah. the essence of the book. Yeah. And, um, or the so book that you did with textile or, it yeah. Is oh, so. I yes. wanted to call it text aisles. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> and, there, and there's Danto, and there's Danto in uh, Arthur Danto, Arthur describing, describing, of course, yes. so it all comes together. Yes. That's why the Higgs book is my manifesto yeah. for the book. It has Perfect. all elements. There we are. All elements, yes. Yeah. We come back in a way to a, a point that you made earlier about your interest in, in large print runs. I find some artist books, which, which I adore, which, which mean a lot, are frustrating because they are artist books and not produced in any other way. When you think of La Lunette Farcie of Jean Dubuffet, Jean Dubuffet is a wonderful writer of French, and the text, the text there is, is, is amazing. It's, it's a series of sort of 
uh, what's the word, the sort of um, uh, just strains of thought which come into your mind incidentally. And it works on, on jumping a line, uh, yes. doesn't it? I want to sit down and absorb that. The only format in which it works is in this artist's book. But when I work, it's kept in a safe. It takes me 20 minutes to get, to get, to get the thing out, and I have a meeting in half an hour and this kind of thing. So I'm not quite sure how, how one negotiates that. But the language is, abs- is, is absolutely um, a, a gripping. Yes. Um, but, of course, we don't approve of facsimiles, perhaps, so we're no, not allowed no, to have no. it in any other way. No, but that's also my interesting word for me is also the book is almost like a film director uh, talking, uh, yeah, uh, doing the sequence of image and how text works. So the, the whole uh, sequencing of, of uh, probably the book we are making is so important. How do we organize the book? So that mm-hmm. could be sort mm-hmm. of uh, almost, um, yeah, it should be, um, should have no compromise. So every effort we should do in, in making uh, revolutionary uh, sequencing, yes. I think that's... Yes. I think that's very important. You have, uh, we have here a book of 2,500 pages by Irma that did as a commission for a, a, an enterprise. Yeah. And it's an artist's book. You can say, you know, imagine an enterprise to make a very bureaucratic book to, to send to the clients mm-hmm. and how, how she made it. Well, she made just a block of paper with the most... Uh, but there's se- the sequence, it, the sequence is crucial. Is, it's, it's like a film. It's, it's if thin. you go through the book, it's, it's a film almost. It's a film. No, the yeah. book that you have done is a film. It's a film in photos, in text, in texture, in different kind of uh, angles of the spaces that you uh, put in the book. The text, but no. it has not sequence. Mm. You know, has but has not. Yeah, it's huh? yeah, true. It's it's the, the that book uh, you can see it in the show is totally based on the idea of internet. When I started making the book, it was in ninety one, so internet was just coming up and people were talking about it, and uh, it was interesting on that moment to make a book and not a CD ROM. What every everybody f- uh, thought at that moment: oh, books are out and books. Uh, we don't believe in books anymore, but. I thought, as a bookmaker, uh, let's do a book and use the idea of internet, the sort of almost browsing through a book, use that idea and, and bring it back to the, to the solid, frozen, uh, bound thing, what we call a book. And I think that idea of the, 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 what a book is, that it's um, edited material brought back to something which you cannot change, I think that's a crucial and the, and the, the, the thing. And the most important thing of the book. So, and because of internet is so important uh, nowadays, but, as, but like you said, internet, digital, you forget. But in a book, you yes. remember. And I yes. totally believe in it. And, and I think that idea is now, uh, uh, people are getting more aware of it. And I feel almost a renaissance of the book. Yes. The book has, it's, has it's, it's interesting, the physical format can dictate reading and the speed of reading. If you read, if you read Tristram Shandy in an 18th century edition, the page, uh, there is more space, you notice the punctuation more when you get the paperback that most of us probably meet, meet that wonderful text first. It's all cramped up and it, right. it becomes a revelation to go back. So. Yeah. Yes. And there are also experience of uh, artists working with artists doing artist book. One artist doing an artist book of other artists. Like, Calder did, and also Aitor Ortiz, who is here, which is an artist photographer who was commissioned by Ivory Press to live for several months with uh, Not Vital in the middle of nowhere mm. in the Low Engadin, and has produced the most amazing book also uh, that you don't see the works of the artist. You mm. don't see the, uh, you did it in a way, Aitor, that you convey the environment of the studio and the work of the artist, but they are not the literal exhibition of the artist itself. So um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's more or less what we are going to do, or similar, the artist in Maboon, designer and maker, doing uh-huh. a book, artist book of the artist book. I, uh, it's a little bit late already. We have, here, we have been here one hour and 15 minutes. I would like... The last question, Carmen again. Uh, two questions, two. 
And then uh, we leave you we a little bit to other go page. to the exhibition. We have to maybe <laughs> devote a question <laughs> to, to the other page. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Carmen, you and you, and that's all. Yeah. Yeah, it's the it's a manifesto. This book came of a long trip from Beijing to the south of China in a plane, several hours with uh, Shai, and discussing about artist book. And he looked at me and said, "Elena, but a book can kill you. You know, in China, a lot of people oh, yeah. was killed because of the books." Or in Europe. Or in Europe. But we were talking about, about there. Yeah, and we were talking East. about the yes. revolution the and Middle the East. family who yeah. live and some of the family, yes. like the father of, of Ai Weiwei, um, that was conveyed, mm -hmm. was a great intellectual and poet, and was conveyed for 20 years to clean only le the letrines mm -hmm. of uh, a concentration camp, and similar to Shai family. So Shai told me, what about if I do a book that if you touch it, really, without care, can explode in your hands and kill yourself. So he did nine unique uh, books, because each one is different and is painted by hand, mm -hmm. but he put a power that if you touch it until mm -hmm. it happen what is happening in the video, that you have here in the exhibition the, fo the, the book that was uh, that explodes, and also another book were two books that you mm -hmm. can see how the power can go. Mm. So, um, a curatorial book, nightmare, of course. Yeah, curatorial, curatorial nightmare, nightmare yeah. to exhibit, yeah, yeah, but this is the reason we put yeah. uh, Anyway. But uh, there you, was other questions. Thank you, Carmen. <laughs> If I understand what you, if I translate, uh, you, you are asking where is the object, the book as an object. Yeah. Well, a book is. No, no, the object book. I the object book. The, the head is not book, it's an object. It can be oh. water, it can be an object. Uh -huh. If you put uh, a text with, with uh, as a, a concept, with a concept, mm -hmm. is unique. Is an artist in an, um, how do you say, do I say? Well, I, we, we, it, we it, try to, comp uh, you, you are asking if an object book is an artist book or is an object as an object itself? No, and, and an or, artist or book. Can or can be. Okay. Visual okay. Right. You, you, no, I, I was thinking you were asking about visual display. And, of course, objects like that need space and they yes. need to be considered. I was just reflecting the, the traditional habit in libraries, of course, is to have busts of famous figures on, mm. on the books uh, where I work. We, in, in, the, in the National Art Library in the V&A, we have busts of former directors to terrify <laughs> readers. And there's even one of the, of the Prime Minister, Gladstone, who was Prime Minister ah. when things was opened. Well, I would like to see... A revolving display there inside the library of of uh, of book objects in in, in order to relay yeah. the ideas. And I was very much ticked off once because I proposed to put a big painting by John Latham, who used to have big big screens with sort of a burnt out bonfire and a spring and a burnt book. And I thought this would be a good introduction to readers coming into library to show them what a library does. It's a place of, a of, of 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 memory to yeah. to avoid catastrophe. Yes. Mm. That's a wonderful so, yeah. so, thing. Yes. <laughs> um, I kind of feel that you have a very... Oh, sorry. Um, I kind of feel that you have a very reactionary way of viewing the internet. Like that the book only ends and starts with a PDF or a CD-ROM. There are so many possibilities of like ma making books like websites or like um, adding... Um, moving images and just there are so many possibilities with the internet mm -hmm. um, it kind of feels like this I, I love books 
but I mean, it's always the search for the holiness of books, that we're trying to elevate them to be above us. And I mean, books are for reading and using. It can't just be an object that you look at. I mean, you need to touch it. That's the whole point. But if you, if you add this holiness to a book, then it becomes like above you. It was just a comment. Um, but if I could just respond, you yourself have answered your own um, problematic because you said um, a book is something that you need to hold. Yeah. And then you speak of the internet. How do you hold the internet? But you do. I mean, there's a computer. I mean, it's Yes, but you don't hold it. You don't hold it as a physical being. You don't take it in your hands. You don't take responsibility for what is there. You can't respond in the same way. Yes, you might interact. Um, but I really feel that that is not a book. You can create hypertexts, and you can con and you can create networks and matrices. But a book is a very different thing. And I'm not speaking for the holiness of the book. I'm speaking for the integrity of the book. You're speaking of the holiness of the internet. I mean, it's still. I mean, it's it's there. It is kind of. But the internet doesn't have stability yet. It's a hyper-object, okay? Um, if you read Timothy Morton, you can understand what hyper-objects are. It's a very different species. And I'm not... Well, if you can materialize what you experience in the internet and create something that remains and has the capacity for memory rather than just being stored in a file, then you might arrive at something um, closer to what we're trying to keep uh, in the world. Otherwise, it's just ephemera. Electronic. What happens when the satellites go out of the sky? Everything is electronic. I mean, That's not true at all. That's not true at all. Everything is not electronic. The, the works in this room are not electronic. I mean, the way we view the world is electronic. I disagree completely. Yeah. I agree what? to disagree. I do not view the world no. electronically. No. It, it, how, it, it, how is, you it do has created a new exciting world. Yes. And yes, in the future, the, yes. uh, the relationship between the material world and the, yes. and the virtual world is going to be something to, uh, to be followed yes, with great is. interest. And perhaps we will evolve to the point where we can. I think the crucial, actually, uh, a more respectful way, uh, and forgive me for my getting antagonistic and, 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 and worked up. No, no. But the point is, um, I think the idea of 3D printing is something that we haven't discussed, and I don't know to what degree. But the internet as a, uh, it's, it's just not, to me, um, to be discussed in the same realm as the book. I think, like, I don't agree with you because... <laughs> Evidently. <laughs> it's about... It's about um, the opportunities of the internet. You know, I, I just said that if you look at the book I've made in 91 when internet was coming up, it is all based on internet. Yeah, so don't, don't think that, that book people are against internet. I cannot live no. without internet. <laughs> it's, it's my source. <laughs> a, a last word before with the question. Uh, the question of this <laughs> seminar was if the artist book was an object, a, a cult of object cult, or a cult of objects. So I ask to you, what do you think about the artist book? What do you, how do you understand an artist book? And what will be your last, um, your last uh, manifesto uh, for the visitors to, to come through this exhibition <coughs> of books beyond artists and uh, go out and celebrate the book and spread the word yes. that the book is worth it to touch, read, see, contemplate. I think what's extraordinary for me about artist books, finally, is that um, there is an exterior and an interior. And whether they're sculptural objects, uh, whether they're it's a wound, uh, whether it's looking through to three-dimensionality, this idea of opening something, opening a world, going from the exterior of the cover to the interior. I mean, this it completely intrigues me, but the idea of going into something is a very this powerful... Your catalog of your books, no? Experience. 
And so um, for me, the artist books, the, the, the invitation to a journey that is going to occur that is not altogether evident at first sight, but that requires one's immersion is something that I wish to uh, keep alive. Uh, so that, but not a cult. It, it doesn't require a holiness. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, it yeah. does. It does Very require important. the word respect, mm. uh, and respect literally just means to spec again, like revision, respect, regard. It's the R E that I think is really crucial when one comes into an artist book. Is that it's something that you will want to re and experience over and over because you realize that you cannot fathom the complexity of what happens when you combine these media together. So there is an endlessness as well as a memory. And so that uh, that relation between memory and exploration is something that I think is true for great artist books. For you? Well, uh, I have more an opinion about uh, the idea book. And uh, for me, the, the book is whatever is on the internet. If I make books, uh, it, it goes from this flux uh, of internet into this uh, frozen uh, or unchangeable entity. And I think that, that becomes, I also w use the word uh, something with re, it becomes a reflection. So it, because it's, it's this edited uh, component, this container of thought, it becomes a new piece to reflect on. And for me, that, that remains for me as a designer, interesting to make books and not websites. Thank you very much. Um, you mentioned the word cult, and of course, the um, it, it is an exhibition like this which ensures that it doesn't become a cult. I'm very struck in, in the discussion. There's a, there's a kind of conventional history of artist books now, and when you find that they're discussed, they're, it's often the book of Matisse, the book of, of, of Picasso, um, and because they're, they're not easily uh, accessible, the texts become overlooked. For instance, I've never, I've, it's rare that Matisse's text in jazz is discussed, mm -hmm. or there, uh, are there are other works. They, they, they become artistic icons, and that's dangerous. And I think that, that um, it is through access, through, through whatever form is possible, through films, through exhibitions, and through, and, 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 and through publications, that they do get worked into our everyday responses to, to what's well, certainly a household object of books. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Irma. Thank you, Robin. This exhibition uh, has been done with uh, the, 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 my and our team of Ivory Press, and we follow what all of us, what put me in the officio of being a publisher, which is the, the passion for exploration of different materials, exploration of different ways to convey text and images the exploration to convey and spread knowledge. And the second criteria, and this is the criteria we follow to select the books, and uh, the different techniques, the different way that artists understand and designers understand the book. And the second one has been inspiration. What inspire us? What make the book like a magnificent and charming and sweet ghost, and sometimes immensely uh, painful, uh, going behind you and hunting you and following you, and you go to bed and you wake up in the middle of the night and you are thinking and feeling that book. So uh, not only in the process of creation a book and being, as a publisher, the instrument for the artist that I'm, we work with, to, to ar arrive to the, to the end is what also the result is. And what is there and should be there is not there. And you know it's not there. So it's a constant suffering um, to be a publisher, to be an artist too, and to be a curator. But I will, I, our, our, our uh, efforts, Ivory Press team and myself, will be completely fulfilled and happily um, live forever if all of you, when you leave this exhibition, you want to explore more about books, about artist books, and you live with some, at least some, some uh, um, uh, little touch 
or great touch of inspiration um, and follow you as a, a companion, as a ghost, and you spread the word that the, the, the books are worthy to live for. Thank you very much.